It's a pleasure today to have one of our own return to give the honors address for 2012, Jeremy Arnsdorf. Now your program will tell you about Jeremy's accomplishments today in our nation's capital, as well as the citation accompanying his 2003 Bronco Award. But if you read that Bronco Award citation carefully, you see that Jeremy was passionate, that he was a positive example of the liberal arts. And then you come to the curious fact that he was acknowledged for the best back rubs ever. <laughs> the best back rubs ever. Well, I did some checking and it seems that Jeremy's room was known as a regular spa among Hastings College students in 2001, 2002, 2003, complete even with a paraffin hand wax machine. <laughs> Jeremy, these stories never disappear completely. Now, Jeremy was a music major at Hastings College and today he's a successful consultant to over 50 federal agencies. So perhaps the title of Mr. Arnsdorf's talk today, Unplanned Journeys, will help us understand the path from a music studio in central Nebraska to the halls of Congress. Jeremy Arnsdorf, welcome back. Thank you all for a very warm welcome. And I'm going to have to figure out who it was who told you about the spa room. Uh, that's very interesting, but true. Um, <laughs> you know, I, uh, I was able to spend yesterday on campus walking around and enjoying how much it's changed. Uh, Dr. Baumfalk gave me a tour of the science hall, which is so impressive. And then I had the real honor and privilege to listen to the Hastings College Choir in rehearsal last night, which was really fantastic. And the last time I was here in French Memorial Chapel was actually May 28th, 2005. And I was standing about right here, and I was singing a duet for the wedding of Dr. Kitty Grace. And since that was my last performance, I was trying to think, should I spice honors convocation up a bit? And in honor of the music department, I thought we could do a little song and dance number with all the people behind me. Um, <laughs> yeah. What do you think? In honor of the forensics slash speech team, I have a beautiful black binder here. I also thought maybe we could do a little impromptu dramatic duo with President Trotter. Um, but for their comfort and my own, we'll stick to a regular speech for this morning. Uh, it was in March that I was on two conference calls, juggling them, trying to participate, making sure that I was using the mute button on the right phone at the right time when suddenly I had an influx of six calls from Hastings College. Now, my first thought was that somebody didn't show up sober to phone-a-thon. My second thought... <laughs> my second thought was that the foundation had gotten awfully aggressive in their donation calls for the year. But to my great surprise and honor, it was Alicia O'Donnell and Holly Sabaka asking me to come back and speak today. Now, they were probably even more surprised than I was because after they asked me, my response was, guys, I've only been out for nine years. There is a term or condition on the back of that Bronco Award that says I have 10 to 15 years before I give this speech. So maybe another year. And, uh, but thankfully, both Holly and Alicia are very persuasive together, and I'm really glad to be here this morning. I have a feeling if you conducted a survey nine years ago at the honors convocation of the class members of 2003 and asked them where they thought they would be today and what they thought they would be doing, very few of them would have been able to answer correctly. If I had received that survey, I probably would have just put two big question marks on the page and turned it back in. And knowing what I know today, that would have been the best answer I could have provided. Before joining my current firm in 2005, I had never given any thought to how the government acquired goods or services, or that there would be a really interesting industry that supported the federal government and the federal contractor community. 
So it was a, definitely a very unplanned journey that took me from my parents' cattle ranch in Tryon, Nebraska, to managing a government consulting firm in Washington, D.C. with a Hastings College music degree. And it's that type of unplanned journey that many of you will be on when you leave Hastings today. I would wager that if a survey was administered this morning and was open nine years from now, it would be a very low percentage of you that could correctly identify where you would be and what you would be doing. And despite your parents' fears, that's okay. And it's not a bad place to be at all. Personally, it's been a really incredible and rewarding journey, and I wouldn't change it for anything. This morning, I'll share a little bit of that journey and the lessons learned along the way so that even if your journey is completely unplanned like mine, you'll at least be a little better equipped than I was when I left for DC. So I, I started a list of the lessons learned and quickly realized that there were too many for a 10-minute speech. And since I fully remember the real excitement of today being the awards portion of the program, I'll just give you three top uh, recommendations really focused on the early years of your career. I'm sure at, honor, or at um, baccalaureate and at commencement, you'll receive a lot of great speeches that are the strategic, big picture talks, but very, uh, very little spent time is spent talking about the first few years after graduation. So nine years ago at the Bronco Who's Who luncheon after this event, we were all going around the room and we were announcing our post-Hastings College plans. Several were going on to med school, many were going on to grad school, which will probably be true today as well. And then it was my turn, and I said, well, I'm moving to Washington, D.C. and working in the Senate. The idea was a result of having been student, body, uh, student association president and then a trip with Sharon Brooks to D.C. for Alpha Chi. But I had done nothing to make that statement reality. So after graduation, I randomly picked June 18th on the calendar as the day I would fly to Washington, D.C. with a suitcase, a place to stay for five days, and no job. It was definitely a very interesting journey. Uh, however, I did receive a call from Senator Nelson's office several months after I'd been in DC and was ecstatic. But I had done nothing to prepare for that and had never completed an internship. I'd never been around a congressional office, so I didn't really know what I was getting into. I knew nothing of its structure and definitely didn't realize how abysmal the pay was for the cost of living in Washington, DC. So after excitingly taking the job as a staff assistant in his office, I received my first paycheck and I turned in my two weeks notice. <laughs> <laughs> While to many it was a big mistake, as tried as it might sound, it really was one of those meant to be experiences. In just 29 business days, I managed to find some of my closest friends and also found massage school that I would later attend um, based on my Hastings College passion. <laughs> So besides better math, what could have I done to be better prepared and position myself and what can you do to position yourself after graduation? My first answer, internships. When an organization hires, they're taking a really great risk. The organization, the organization is investing a lot of resources to search for, vet, hire, and train new employees. And in the end, that employee may not be the right fit. So an organization will mitigate that risk by first turning to known quantities. I hear it all the time from our COO. He'd rather hire someone that we know who's hardworking and smart than trust a resume and a couple one-hour interviews. With your liberal arts degrees, you can pursue a large number of paths. Internships can help confirm your interest in certain areas, or it can lead you down a completely different path. They give you the opportunity to explore a new city without making a commitment to it. And they also give you the idea of how the office is structured and what the compensation may look like. Uh, one piece of advice on internships, it may not always be the most interesting work. Just with any job, there are a bunch of mundane tasks that no one really wants to do. But remember, no matter how uninteresting the task, be eager, be reliable, and produce high quality work. The good news for you is that internships abound in any city and basically every profession. So I encourage you to, to uh, pursue them during J-term, during uh, summer, and also if you're having trouble finding a job after graduation. And for those of you on the unplanned journey into the workforce, you'll soon discover a world of job ads that seem like they would be the perfect fit for you until you get to the sentence that says, at least five years of professional experience required. And it's one of the greatest disappointments because you think I've just spent four or five years for some of you at Hastings and I've really refined my skills why can't I have this job? Uh, now, you and I are part of the same generation, the millennials, 
And one of the biggest complaints about us millennials is our lack of patience for the, sta uh, for the status quo. Uh, however, because we are liberal arts uh, people, we have to have a little patience and a plan. For the vast majority of us, the first couple jobs out of college are not going to be your dream jobs and may not even be your career path. But the first jobs are where you will demonstrate your ability to do more than what's required, to use those positions as a watching post to learn from others around you, and also as a springboard into better positions. If things have stayed the same, you've probably heard a familiar refrain about the liberal arts education you're receiving. And it goes something like this. As a receiving a liberal arts education, you're going to have a very strong and broad base of knowledge and capabilities, and different than your university, which is different than your university peers who have really focused on their discipline. But that because of that broad and strong base of knowledge, you may have a start, or you may have a slower start, but that the growth curve can be significantly greater. And I have to admit, when I first heard that as a student, I chalked it up as liberal arts propaganda. But I'm here today as proof that it really is true. So my, my first position at the consulting firm was serving as an administrative assistant. It definitely was not the dream job. For those of you who have seen it, life was a little bit like Anne Hathaway's character in The Devil Wears Prada, <laughs> except that uh, fashion in New York is probably a lot more glamorous than consulting in Washington, DC. And while it was not the dream job, it was the perfect place for me to begin my career because of the person I was working for. My boss had the highest standards of anyone that I've ever met. And because I was her assistant, those standards were expected of me. In the 20 years that the firm existed before I joined it, no one had ever made a jump from the administrative track to the client-facing track. But because I had used that position as a watch post, I learned from her, who I considered to be one of the best, and I applied those high standards to everything I did. I was able to demonstrate the value to my company and make the jump to the client-facing role and then grow quickly once over there. So regardless of the position you take, look, listen, learn, and find opportunities to lead. And finally, establish your brand. Hastings College and every organization brands and markets itself, and you must do the same for you. On the last day of classes for the year, your homework assignment is this. Think about what constitutes your brand. Create a list or a word cloud and keep it on your desk or nearby so that you can remember how you want others to perceive you. Some words that I hope you will, that will appear on your list. Dependable, accurate, timely, superior quality, knowledgeable, prepared, understanding, and adaptable. Do those words describe you now? If not, what must you do to make them be true? Showing up simply is not enough for success. Don't settle for mediocrity, but challenge yourself to excel. And while Hastings College brands itself via its website and t-shirts and newsletters, its best branding resources are its students and its graduates. And it's a mutually beneficial arrangement. If Hastings College has a strong brand, your resume will be given greater consideration in the workplace. You, your parents, and or the government have spent a lot of money and invested a lot in you, and it will be expressed in the form of a single piece of paper in a couple of weeks. At the end of the day, however, that piece of paper is worthless unless you give it value through your actions and your deeds. For that degree to be an asset and to quickly catapult you into the world, others have to believe that it has value. As you spread across the country and the world, remember that it's up to you to further the Hastings College degree's value for yourself, your classmates, and the future Hastings College students. From the Hastings Today publications and President Trotter's email updates, and then the conversations around, that I've had around campus yesterday and today, I truly am very impressed with all the accomplishments that you guys have attained, as well as the dedication and the support that Hastings College professors, administration, and staff have given to you. I look forward to reading and hearing about the great things that you'll do here at Hastings College and in the world. And planned or unplanned, I hope that all of you enjoy and relish in the journeys that await you. My sincerest congratulations to all of you, and I hope that our paths cross in the future. Thank you.